Uh, can I have a couple questions for you? Did he yeah. tell you that he was with someone for 20 years? No, he didn't. He didn't? He completely no. lied to you? Yeah. Really? Yeah. And did he, he said he was single and he had to have his dream. Oh, I have, I have, it all, I have yeah. a whole single thing right here. Yeah. My question for you is, well, uh -huh. I'm sorry, what's your name? Uh, Cindy. Cindy, did he, did he aggress you? Yes. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Have it. I came here, Chris, with the intention to, to tell you that I love you. And I wanted it's us nice to, move, to, do it. to move on, and I wanted to ask you to marry me. You've got to be kidding. No, I'm not. You seriously are going to propose? This is a joke, right? This is now no I joke. get it. It's a joke, right? I'm not. No, this is no joke. I don't see any form. You're of actually being a joke. proposing to me. I think we need. We to have answer. been dating for 20 we years. We need to if answer it, If some we were meant to here. be together, it would have happened already. So, are you saying? I'm that saying you that don't want to work through this with me. You don't want to no try. There's no way that the two of us are going to go past this. And so you're going to no go back way. to her? Because I have a funny feeling she's going to tell you no. She I've said had enough that he of this. romanced her. No, we're not getting married, and we're certainly not going to continue a relationship with all these people watching. This is it's embarrassing, and you've ruined that place for me and all the other musicians that play here. I haven't ruined it for anybody. Yes, you have. You've ruined it for yourself. The show has. It's trash. You TV ruined show. it for yourself. I, it. I think the only thing that's trash is what you've done to this relationship, okay. Chris. If you say so. What if you just saw another man with that woman? Would you care? Would you be pissed? If she had another man, she'd probably be doing herself a favor. We aren't meant to be with each other, and we're not getting married. Can you not just give me the truth? Bunch of hypocrites. Every one of you. Act like you've never done anything wrong. We need to talk. You can't just leave me like this. Chris, you call yourself a man and a musician. You're about to leave? Chris, please don't. After the confrontation, Catherine realizes she has some tough decisions to make. At the end of the show, Cheaters reveals her choice. But now, Maurice comes forward to tell his side of the story surrounding the evening he was confronted by his longtime girlfriend on Cheaters. Before the camera crew got there, me and Leah was in the car chilling, drinking, you know what I'm saying, having a good time. And then the limo man said somebody was following us. So as I got out the car to see somebody following us, just the cheaters, man, a lot of people just ganged up on us. You know what I'm saying? Then I see Lindsay, she come over there, she start hitting me and start roughing me up and stuff, start slapping me, start cussing me out. I ain't never been that embarrassed. Are you serious? Oh, baby, I'm sorry. Are baby, you I'm serious, sorry, I'm sorry, baby? I'm sorry, baby. I'm sorry. Yeah, 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 I'm no, no, baby, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, baby, I'm sorry. Is that bitch? I'm sorry. What's up, ho? Bitch, I'm not here, bitch. Hey, I promise, baby, I'm sorry. Okay, the way Lindsay busted me is kind of surprising because I didn't even think she would do all that. You know what I'm saying? Even though she's kind of crazy, deranged a little bit, but I didn't think she would take it up to that level. Really, I blame myself for not telling her that I was involved with another woman playing with her feelings. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't like, because I wouldn't want nobody to play with my feelings. You know what I'm saying? So really, I blame myself. I don't blame nobody else because they didn't have nothing to do with it. You know what I'm saying? They were just caught in a triangle. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, come on, Have we been going through what? what? Let me, we been going through? No, no, let me talk to you. Really? Come on, baby, come on. Really? You want to put this over her head? You don't feel used in a way at all? Excuse me. Excuse me. Embarrassing me on TV like this? You come don't sorry. You ain't some embarrassment. You ain't sh You ain't sh you do me like that, you do me like that. Do you like what? Do love for me. I won't tell Liz that I'm sorry, and I still have love for her, you know what I'm saying? And we then had our time, and I feel like our time is over. In order for me and Leah to get back together, I had to rub her feet, rub her, run her bath water, cook for her, you know what I'm saying? She had me up. Walk her dog, and I can't stand that dog. That dog be boo-booing everywhere. And, I, I, and she got cats, too, so I had to feed, uh, change the cat litter and pick up the boo-boo from the dog. So, you know, so, you know, it's just a lot of things that she had me doing, you know. 
So, but that's my baby, and I really care about her. So if, if it takes that to do it, hey, I'm all down for it. Despite a willingness to work things out, Catherine Oliver realizes the suspect played both her and his companion. Politely refusing Cheater's offer of counseling, Catherine feels she can handle the situation on her own. Following the emotional confrontation, Chris Rowe continues to deny any wrongdoing. The suspect has moved out of the home he shared with Catherine and currently resides in a motel room. When contacted by Cheater's producers, the companion acknowledged that she is an unwilling dupe in the affair. The companion currently seeks less... Hey, please. Oh, Get out of my face! Oh, my gosh! You are a cheater. Now you're a comedian. That's what you deserve. That's what you deserve. Real Reality Television has brought to you by Cheaters Detective Agency's Private Eyes on Cheaters. With serious concerns regarding her boyfriend's private time activities, Brittany Hotchkiss needs to know what secrets he's keeping. Distrusting of his actions when she's not around, Brittany commissions a comprehensive examination of her relationship. I'm Joey Greco, and this is Cheaters. All of a sudden, it went from us like having this perfect relationship to me not being able to reach him and me not being able to get access into his things the way he would, you know, always give me access. It was, it's just, it's different. It's like a totally different, and you know it, you know. I try to talk to him, and it's like now I can't even get through to him. Like, it used to be where I could have conversations with him, and we could really work things out. But now it's like I'm speaking, you know, a different language. He's speaking a different language, and there is, like, no mediation. There's nothing in the middle to help us communicate anymore. It's like a wall there. I feel like most of it is my fault. I feel like I've done something wrong. I feel like... I feel like I can't make him happy anymore and that I did make him happy for a while, and then it's something wrong with me. And I, I know that that may not be the case, but that's exactly how I feel. I feel like there's something wrong with me, that you know this relationship seems so perfect, and then all of a sudden he's completely turned off by me, or he's completely changing his patterns or his ways. It has to be something that I did. I can't sleep, I can't concentrate. Am I gonna be by myself tonight? Is it, any day, is it going to end? Is it going to be over? I don't, I don't know. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters Detective Agency may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Investigative charges may apply. Granville, age 35. A financial planner suspected of putting his profit in another woman's dividend. Investigation day three. After two days and no movement on the case, Cheaters detectives remain diligent outside the apartment the client and suspect share. An unknown female is spotted slinking up the stairs to the suspect's front door. The woman knocks and the suspect, identified only as Granville, opens the door and steps out onto the porch. After a brief hug hello, Granville ushers his neighbor down the stairs and into the passenger seat of his car. Mobile units follow the pair across the street to a local bar. They walk arm in arm inside and are soon spotted by undercover agents enjoying some drinks at the bar. The couple appear to be in good spirits while imbibing some spirits of their own. Eventually, the two leave the establishment and return to Granville's residence. They both ascend the stairs and disappear inside the apartment. An hour and a half later, Granville sees his companion to the door. She returns to her own apartment, and Granville shuts the door, ending this day of investigation. Investigation Day 5. With Brittany again working the late shift at her restaurant job, agents are on high alert for further developments. They spot the suspect, shirtless, coming out onto the balcony with a phone. It's evident that his phone call was to beckon his downstairs neighbor upstairs. 
The neighbor, now identified only as Andy, appears dressed as if she just got out of the shower. Andy makes her way up to Granville and indicates to him that she wants something more than just a cup of sugar. Granville apparently likes what he sees and begins to grope Andy on the balcony. The two spend some time exhibiting their lust before retiring inside the apartment that Granville and Brittany share. A few hours tick by before agents regain sight of the couple. Andy exits the apartment but is not allowed to leave just yet. Granville grabs his busty beauty and delivers a few final kisses for the night. Investigation Day 8. It seems to detectives on duty that a pattern of deceit is forming. With Brittany working the late shift, they see Andy and Granville leaving their apartments almost in unison. The suspect scurries down the stairs to greet his buxom buddy by his car. Mobile units then track the couple to another nearby bar. They enter and are soon seen on the patio enjoying some beverages. It may be date night for Granville, but it's Brittany who's picking up the tab, as revealed in this recorded phone call. Hello. Hey, babe, what are you doing? Working. Working. Yeah, I'm calling you all day. I'm answering the phone. Okay, well, I got to eat stuff I got to do. Yeah, I mean, I can't. Okay, well, I understand that, but at least you can just call me and say hi. I mean, you know, I love you. With a final nail in the proverbial coffin, PIs return to headquarters and begin compiling the bad news for Brittany. Coming up, the confrontation. With proof of Granville's flagrant philandering, Brittany's brought in to inspect the findings. Unaware as to the depth of his degeneracy, she tries to find peace before the truth sets her free. On this particular evening, while you're at work, a neighbor exits, goes upstairs, knocks on the door, there's a brief hug. A short time later, they exit the building, he lets her into the passenger side of his vehicle. He gets in his side. And after he gets in, they travel to a bar. That's across the street from my house. He gets the door. They go inside, grab a seat. They have some drinks, go back to the apartments. She goes inside. She's in there for a short period of time. She shouldn't be in my house. She shouldn't be in my house. She exits goes down to her place, Granville goes inside. On this occasion, a little different scenario plays out. Granville's outside on the phone. The neighbor comes upstairs, sporting a robe, which she promptly opens up, exposes herself to Granville, evidently pleased. They go inside your apartment and the light turns off. Quite some time later, the door opens up. You see a brief romantic exchange, and she goes downstairs to her apartment. We've had a detective stationed outside of your place again tonight, and we know that they're together. Yeah, right now. Right now. I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and get in the van. We'll call the detective from there and see if he can give us an update on their whereabouts. Okay? You ready? Come with me. Gomez, what do you have on your end? So they went to the same bar? To the same bar that they've been going to? Okay, they're in now? Got it. Okay. No, 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 no. Well, we know where that is, and we're headed there right now. Meet you around back. All right. Go around back when we get there. Okay, on our way. Much time. 
Follow me, right? Go. Stop. Touch me. What's wrong? Touch me. Touch me. Touch me. No. Boom. 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 Easy. Watch out. Touch me. Touch me. What are you talking about? You are a liar. What am I lying about? Let me start moving it outside. You you know who the baby come here. Baby, 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 you already know, G. Don't play, don't play like that. Don't play like that. You already know. You already know. Baby, what what are you talking about? We already know. First of all, we've had to. You shut the hell up. Ain't nobody you because you know better. You you know better. Ladies, ladies, ladies. You know better. Baby, what are you? Come on, get, you get her off there. Settle down. You should have been taking care of your business. He wanted to have to come over in the middle of the night. Coming up next, the conclusion. And we know that they're together. What the f is going on? Oh, hell no. What the f get, get her off him. Why, why are you tripping? You already know. We don't do it like that. I know where the f you live. I know the Protect her. Get, get her off him. Babe, babe, babe. Come on, come on. Come on. Break it up, break it up. What I taste like, ho? What I taste like? Don't touch my mother shoe. Don't touch that belong to me. None of y'all. The car is what in the front. You the, car, the car is in the front. Let's go, let's go to the car in front. I'm not finna, I'm not finna. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. What? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, wait, wait, y'all cupcake? No, I ain't did nothing. Y'all cupcake? Y'all cupcake? They just show me the damn video, you I ain't idiot. seen no video. Show me a video. Here. Somebody get this. I ain't seen no video. About this. I got it right here. You okay, you, what you gonna show me on video? Okay. Somebody Outside on your phone. Video. Who's coming upstairs? Your neighbor. Remember that night? Okay, we neighbors. Yeah. You can't come to my house. Oh, oh she in a bad house. Oh, yeah, you just feel it. In a bad house, you got your damn shirt off. Tell oh, here it Wait, no, he, no. The, the problem is he doesn't remember. He don't already know because he forgot. I don't drink that here, much. I how about this? Know. Okay, how about Mother, Obviously, you oh, do yeah. got to drink a lot. Oh. Of the time you up okay. in here with this bitch. That? Remember that? Okay, well, now look, fake ass, precious you can do ass whatever you want, bitch, but if you're not you happy live, with her, so why are you still keeping her in a relationship? She already knows. That's my girl. That's your girl? Then why are you standing next to her? If I'm your girl, you with me. Because you out here tripping, you got all these people. This... This is where I come to hang out at, and you got all these people looking at me crazy. This is where we hang out at. We're here every day You already know. I don't run, mother. Don't run. Don't run. Don't run. Don't run. Don't run. Don't run. Okay, come on, let's go. You ain't going to keep embarrassing me. No, we ain't going talk about Come on, let's go. No. 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 He ain't going to talk about Bad ass security. Get out of here. Let her go. Let her go. I'm going to be in jail after tonight. No, look, here. No, we ain't finna talk about Get my keys. Get my keys. Make sure somebody got the mother money. If I'm gonna whoop this ass. Stop. Stop. Say something else. Dumb. Where y'all? Bitch. That way y'all got security lights. Say something else. G, let's go. Come on, G. Here, take the keys. Go get in the car. I'll, Andy, you're here, busy. Go, go, I'll go to the car. Come on. In oh. the front. Here, no. give her Let that fat bitch walk. Give her, give we her live across range. the street. It broke now. No. I guess you bought them earrings too, right? We live across the street. Why? Let that Why fat bitch walk. Why y'all letting her walk up on me? Why y'all letting her walk up? Why are you walking away? You scared? Because you scared, bitch? You scared? You scared? You scared? You scared? Uh -huh. 
No. It's just the beginning. Please don't touch me. Settle down. No. Get in the car, please. She already knew. Please don't worry. Get in the car. She already knew. Come on, come on. I ain't got the room in that hole. Say something else. Say something else. Oh, say something. But guess what? Who getting in the car? Oh, who getting in the car? That raggedy ass. Who getting in the car? That mother raggedy ass Christ. Who putting gas in it? You. I bitch ain't putting no mother gas in this raggedy ass. Why still got a little like this? Hey, this is. Case. You set this in or motion. What? All right. Or what? All right, y'all want to play games? Or y'all want to play games? Get the away from my car. Oh, what you going to do? Oh, you going to get in the with my car. You going to get in the with my car. Or what? Or what? Or what, or what? Or what you going to do? No. No. Because I've been nice. You want me to act ignorant? Oh, 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 you want me to be stupid like this belligerent ass, ignorant ass fool? Ignorant got good. Ignorant. You fat. You fat girls got good. Stupid ass bitch. You I got your man. Still. I know you ain't talking. Uh -huh. Look at that like damn skeleton man over here. Oh, ugly ass crackhead survival looking ass mother. Yeah, you know how fat ass need air conditioning. Let's go. Get out. Get out of my car. Get her out. Let her go, man. Let her go. Get out of my car. I put his shirts on this damn car. This is my damn car, too. This is my car, too. I don't have to get out. I don't have to get out of no mother car that got my name on it, too. Well, y'all better move the out of my way. You gonna run like a little bitch? You gonna be scared? You scared? No, that's all right. Let him run away. No, that's all right, because I got my house key right here. This is about to go. Following the confrontation, Brittany attempts to rise above her fury to find a silver lining. At the end of the show, we'll inform you as to her success. But now, Desiree Furlong, the companion from the Melissa Fletcher case, reveals her thoughts on being exposed while on a bender by cheaters. We're just getting our drink on, and then certainly after that, you know, got a little flirtatious, because, you know, we're drunk, we're looking to have a good time. So then we pulled over into like a dark, you know, spot just to, you know, have sex. And then all of a sudden, camera lights came on, and then, he got pulled out of the car, and then I just really don't really remember what happened. Like I said, I was drunk. Get your ass out of the car! What the f are you doing? What, the f what is your problem? Hey, okay, all right. What are you right. doing? Well, what's your deal, dude? What is this? What is this? She's just a friend. Oh, man. she's just a friend? What's going on? What do you mean, man? what's going on? What's you going get on? the out of the way. So a little bit after the show, yeah, we saw each other on and off for about two weeks after that, uh, you know, but the fact that, you know, he cheated on his girl, that, that always plays in the back of mind, and I'm not really looking for anything serious, I'm just going to keep shocking. He's not the one, like I said, you know, it took me two weeks to find out, you know, I was just having fun then, it's nothing now, and uh, it's just nothing, you know, nothing serious anymore, so. How much have you had to Absolutely enough. He did not drink enough of what I drank. Can you say that again? I'm sorry. Great. Uh, he had not drank enough what I had drank. Is that good enough for you? Uh, yeah, I'm looking for love one day, but obviously, you know, I'm just going to have fun. I'm not going to jump anything I know I'm not going to be serious about, but I'm not going to just be like some old nanny, you know, sitting in bed with myself, you know. So I'm just going to go out and have my fun, and if love comes along, it does. If not, then I'm just going to keep doing my thing. Now that she's had time to collect herself, Brittany Hotchkiss has concluded that it's time to move on and away from Granville's lies. Regarding her former friend and neighbor, she says, let her have him. Cook him up and eat him for all I care. She needs less fat in her diet anyway. Brittany is currently living with her cousin until she finds a permanent residence. Granville continued to profess his innocence claiming that all the footage obtained by detectives did not tell the whole story. He states, you need to get your facts straight before you go on ruining people's lives. Andy didn't return. Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters.
Well, he's been a little bit more distant lately. Like, um, I just feel like he just wants to be all business with me. Like, maybe he's just around still for stage time, um, you know, using this as a vessel to further his comedy career. But he's kind of washed up. I, he's, you know, I've been out a lot, and he's been passive aggressive toward me a lot. Um, yeah, he's not taking me out. He's not, you know, um, being affectionate toward me. It's, you know, something's going on. Dave Beckers, age 45, a part-time comic suspected of turning his relationship into a bad joke. Cheaters deploys a squad to stake out the home Jess shares with the suspect. Just after sundown, Beggars and Jess leave the residence, followed tightly by a cheater's mobile unit. The client and her boyfriend drive across town to a comedy club. The pair enter the building. Inside, Beggars bellies up to the bar as Jess talks to a few people in the lobby. While Jess grabs a table for them, the suspect stays at the bar. An unknown female, the bartender, walks over to the suspect's spot and begins chatting with him. Well, I hear a lot of rumors when I'm out of town that Dave's talking to other girls around the comedy clubs, and, you know, I don't want to jump to conclusions and believe them. I know people could be petty, especially when it comes to other people becoming successful. And um, when I come back home from being on the road, I try my best to connect with him, you know, to catch up, go out, have fun. But he doesn't want to do that. He always tells me, oh, well, you seem tired, so I'm going to go off and do my own thing. And he doesn't say where he's going. Um, you know, I don't, I don't want to fight with him. I just want to I just want to catch up and, you know, and, you know, nurture our relationship further. And he's just, he's up to something. Dave continues to smooze with the pretty barmaid for a short while. And after a few moments, the unknown female steps out from behind the bar and beggars follows her outside. On the patio, the suspect and his sexy bartender continue the conversation. Beggars plays with a woman's hair as they talk. Finally, the bartender finishes her cigarette. Jess then arrives, interrupting the conversation. Snagging her guy, Jess and Beggars finally leave. We have spent five years together. We used to be each other's number one fans. We used to really support each other. And, you know, sometimes he's still sweet to me. It happens very, very far in between periods of arguing, but sometimes he tells me I'm great, I love you, and that just makes me think, well, what, what did you do? Like, why are you trying to finesse me like this? And it's just, it's not the Dave that I, you know, built my life with for these last few years. No, if Dave's cheating on me, I am not forgiving him. He is out, I am throwing all of his stuff to the street, and I will never let him work in the clubs with me again. Cheaters detectives keep vigil over Jess and the suspect's residence. Sometime later, agents spot beggars as he leaves home. A mobile unit tails him across town to a strip mall parking lot. Beggars gets out and waits a few minutes. Shortly, the pretty bartender from previous surveillance, now identified only as Stormy, arrives in her SUV. Beggars takes Stormy's purse pops the trunk of his own vehicle and retrieves what can only be described as an art piece. The unlikely duo stroll to a nearby restaurant for a quick bite. On the patio, Beggars romantically feeds his lunch day the bite of his own dish. A short while later, having finished their repast, Beggars and Stormy walk around the area to an art house. A few minutes later, the pair leave the art house without Beggars' art piece. The suspect returns his companion to her vehicle and leaves, ending this day of surveillance. With intel from Jess that she left town on business, Cheater's agents stick to the game plan of staking out the residence. After dark, operatives watch as beggars exits. The trailing Cheater's squad notes the suspect takes the known path to the comedy club. Beggars enters the building, and guess who he meets? Stormy, of course. They converse at a table for a bit before entering the stage area. Once inside, Beggars commences to do his stand-up routine in front of an almost empty room. After his bit finishes, Beggars and Stormy leave the club. 
The suspect and his hot date traipse back to his parked car. The lovers get into the vehicle and take the familiar route back to his residence. Beggars escort Stormy into the dwelling he shares with Jess. Footage provided by one of two interior cameras placed by Jess shows the impious sweethearts sharing an impetuous kiss. Stormy steps into another room as the suspect sits down. When the young hottie returns, she obviously has an interesting evening planned, being that she's stripped down to a thong and carries a pair of handcuffs. Stormy climbs into the suspect's lap for a few minutes, and eventually Stormy leads beggars to the kitchen area. The bartender handcuffs the suspect to a beam supporting the kitchen ceiling. With beggars hanging by his arms, Stormy proceeds to kiss and fondle him. However, the joke lies on the suspect as Cheaters ties up the case for a betrayed Jess. Coming up, The Confrontation. With all evidence pointing to infidelity firmly established, Cheaters requests a meeting with Jess to examine the sorrowful information. Summoning all her stoic courage, Jess determines to learn the truth. Jess, first thing I'd like to say is um, thank you for coming out this evening. I understand that you've been going through a lot. As you know, we have conducted our investigation, Jess. My question for you is, are you prepared to see the evidence that we have come up with? Yes. OK, fair enough. Mm -hmm. Jess, we begin our investigation outside of your residence. We see Dave emerge. He walks over to his vehicle and he gets inside. He has something in his hand. Not really sure what that was, but it looked like a form of some sculpture. Yeah, he does this weird thing with dolls. Okay. Well, he leaves and then he arrives at a parking lot. We see him get out of his vehicle. He closes the door. Uh -huh. A few moments later, that blonde girl pulls up uh -huh. and we see Dave go to the back of his trunk and pull out that doll sculpture. And they walk away together. That's when we see them go across the way and they arrive at a restaurant. Dave opens up the door for her, they walk inside, sit at the outdoor patio and share a meal. Mm -hmm. Do you recognize her? Yeah, that's Stormy. That's Stormy? Yeah. Does this seem strange to you at this point? No, we, we are, we're all friends. It's, okay. You know. After finishing up their meal, they return to that parking lot. That's when we see Dave say goodbye to Stormy. He gets into his vehicle and he leaves. On this day, as our detectives follow Dave, he arrives at the comedy club. Okay. He parks, gets out of his vehicle, and he walks inside. That's when we see him okay. go sit out on the patio with Stormy. We then see Dave doing his bit up on the stage while Stormy watches. After he finishes up, she hands him the keys to his car. Mm -hmm. They walk out together, and mm -hmm. they leave together. As our detectives follow Dave, he then arrives back at your residence. Mm -hmm. We see the two of them walk inside holding hands, and that's when he points out his sculpture of doll collections. Whoa! And she lays a kiss they on Dave. They just kiss? They did. Dave then proceeds to sit on the chair. Whoa! She goes into the bathroom, comes out completely topless with her underwear on only. Oh my gosh. And a pair of handcuffs. That's my friend. This that's is... my chair. You recall that surveillance equipment that we installed in your house when we began this oh, whole yeah, process? Yeah, yeah. Okay, well. Yeah. We had a hidden audio conversation we picked up, and uh -huh. that's what you're about to listen to. She's gone. She's in Seattle. She is not coming back. We know it's funny. I was uh, jealous of her getting that kid, and now I'm like, huh, in Seattle, a bunch of sweaty hippies, or here, in my incredibly comfortable chair, with a gorgeous stone in my lap. That's just being here in Seattle. You're such a nice company. I could just strangle her right now. I completely like, understand that. Like we have, this is five years of my life with my friend. I, I'm, I feel like I'm gonna be sick. After finishing yeah. up that little conversation, Dave stands up, Stormy takes him over to the rafter in the house, handcuffs him, begins to make out with him, begins to kiss him multiple times. Whoa and you could only imagine what else happens. Jess, I think you've seen enough. At this point in time, why don't we get in the vans and get on the road? We can get to that comedy club. They're there together. 
Are you ready to bust, Dave? I'm ready to bust, and Dave. Mm -hmm. All right. Both of them. Right this way, please. Let's do this. Excuse us. Go, 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 go. Hello. Yeah. Right there. <laughs> Coming up, the conclusion. We can get to that comedy club. They're there together. <laughs> what are you doing? Are you are my friend. I don't care about you. You snap me off the camera. Are you copying that? Go, take it. Is he shooting with cocaine? Yeah, that's Stormy, the bartender here. My boyfriend of five years. Sorry, mean anything? Dead bitch, I know. You guys happy? Everything? Awesome? Our slap out of me? You got her on stage? How dare you me? talk to me like that? How dare you go up and talk to me how like that? You, Who do you think you, you are? Slap you slap the out of what me. is this? You're how do you little... slap the out of me? Of course I did. Look at you buying this little freaking Mustang like a Frisco mom. Oh my, oh my gosh, that wasn't enough for your midlife crisis? You had to go pretty much your daughter? That's disgusting. Him, her, both of them. Dave, I think, you, I think you need to take a deep breath and relax. All right, listen, you guys had a great relationship and then something went wrong. Mm -hmm. Obviously she's gone a lot, I understand that, but why wouldn't you just communicate that to her in the first place and just say, hey, listen, sweetie, you're gone so much. Did you not see how she reacted? Did you not see how she reacted? Okay, she beat the shit out of me in front of the cameras. If I would have told her any of that would have happened, she would have beat the shit out of me then. Dude, you got some issues, man, you got some. Anger issues, Why does seriously. she have it? Well, because she's angry because you cheated on her. I mean, I could show you if you want to see it again. I'm good. I'm I'm fine. I and you made that. her one of your doll oh, yeah, sculptures. That looked pretty near and dear. You yeah, made... you're 40 playing with dolls. That's, okay. that's there we go. There we go. That's great. awesome. Yeah. Do you think that's it would have awesome. been a better idea to maybe get like a sex doll to play with instead of a real one? Dave, you two were spending a lot of time I together. Know. I know. I was there. That's me. I know. You don't have to show me. Okay. But why did you do that? Why did I do it? Yeah hot okay and she's gone that's why i did it what would you do look at that look at that that's amazing that's beautiful and this is gone all the time you know don't, i would be honest with away. my artistic girlfriend and tell her how i truly feel instead of lying and cheating on her thank you well guess what it's done okay it's over it's done so it's over now that you've screwed up yeah it's over now that she beat, it's over now that she beat out of me so it's over your so face is happy. bleeding and i can't happy. even recognize yeah. you yeah, yeah, dave uh -huh, it's so uh -huh. terrible i can't wait to go Cops, it's gonna be awesome. Really, Dave, that's all you have to say instead of apologizing. What else do you want me to 
fucking say? Apologize. What? No, I fucking apologize. She beat the shit out of me. What the fuck am I gonna say to her? Hit me again? Fuck you. I would say sorry. What do you want to do? This is ultimately up to you. Do you feel like you've gotten what you've needed? Um, yeah, I've gotten what I needed. Mm-hmm. Dot com. Completely disgusted by her boyfriend's atrocious behavior, Jess realizes she has a difficult decision to make. At the end of the show, Cheaters reveals her plan for the future. But now, Cheaters welcomes Sarah Reed. Sarah comes forward to clear up how her relationship with her husband's best friend was unveiled on Cheaters. When we were caught, I was definitely embarrassed. Um, not only in my actions, but just the confrontation in itself was just it was in a public place, so it was kind of embarrassing having so many people staring at us and sort of knowing what we did without knowing the backstory behind it. What are you doing, man? Oh, okay, calm down. My wife's here. You're with my wife, yeah? We're just, just having, having a pie. Pies. Having a pie, having a couple of beers. Is it nice? Is it nice? It's nice! It's him! Why would you do this to your best friend? Why would you do this to your husband? What are you doing? Simon, what are you doing? Go. Go. Hang a bit of a beer. Have some pies. Like. Why would you do this to your friend, Chris? What did I do? What did I do? Oh, I we haven't done anything. We're, eating, we're literally eating pie. We haven't I've done anything. I've seen your videos. Now. I've seen what you've been up to. There's no videos. I've seen your videos. Simon, there's no videos. Simon, there's no videos. When I started seeing Chris, it really was not intentional, um, I, the, the act of cheating. It just kind of slowly progressed. He came to stay with Simon and I. And we ended up at first just hanging out as friends, and then kind of one thing led to another, and it progressed and progressed. And um, then we ended up getting together. Um, I, we knew it was wrong at the time, but just because Simon and Chris had been friends for so long, and Chris, Simon and I were married, it just made for a really sort of bizarre love triangle. You took my heart, you sliced the open, you shoved up my ass and me. That's how bad it is. Like, don't come home. Find a way home, f yourself, go f yourself, Simon. peace out. F you guys. F you. F you. You know what? F you. F you, man. Yeah. What's up? Give me a little time. Stop, 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 stop. Stop. Oh, I'm blocked. Oh, man. <laughs> The relationship with Chris um, has actually gone beyond my expectations. And now that I'm divorced, we actually are together. And we are actually planning on getting married ourselves in, within the next year or so. We just kind of realized that we're more compatible. Um, we're, we're into the same things, the same music. We both are very social and we enjoy um, spending time with each other. Following the confrontation, Jess Allen realizes her comedy partner deserves to be left alone. Jess has also broken off the friendship she once had with the suspect's companion. For his part in the whole ordeal, Dave Beggars refuses to take any responsibility. When questioned by Cheater's producers, the suspect claims, I can't believe she'd further her career by ruining mine the way she did. Jess didn't have to pull all this out in the open made me look like an ass in my own hangout. I can't even go back in there without getting laughed off stage. The suspect's companion, Stormy, hey, please. Faster! Yeah, baby, I'm gonna handcuff you. Ladies. Get out of my face! Oh my God! You are a cheater. Now you're a comedian. That's what you deserve. That's what you deserve. Real reality television as brought to you by Cheaters Detective Agency's private eyes on Cheaters. Feeling her heart is breaking has a lot to do with Amanda Henry's worry. Suspicious that her boyfriend's passion is being passed on to someone new, Amanda appoints those capable of exposing what he's been hiding. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. Well, he plays the organ for our church. Now, at this time, we are needing some extra money. So he says he's going out at night and that he's going to try and find gigs um, in order to try to get us some extra money. But it's really 
not adding up at all. Like we're still having the same problems. They're still having the same bills and they're still late. Well, we're still not paying on time and I do not see an, any kind of change in the amount of money or income that we have. I, I first started noticing the changes in Demetrius about six months ago. I started noticing him being distant from me, not, not showing any affection towards me. Um, not saying that he loved me anymore. And he's always been a touchy, feely, a very emotional person towards me. And I could just tell it's so different. I could tell that it's different. Now it's like, it's hard for him to even kiss me. I have to initiate everything. And then when we do uh, try to spend the time together or get close, it just does not seem real anymore. Every time he comes home from the gig, like he's tired, he doesn't want to do anything. It's, it really hurts so much to just think that someone I've been with for five years um, is, is treating me this way now. And I really do, I, I love him to death, really want to be with him, but I do want to find out the truth. Like, I really think there's someone else and I want to find out. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters Detective Agency may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Investigative charges may apply. Demetrius Taft, age 30, a supervisor accused of using his beautiful organ music to seduce another woman. Investigation Day 3. With knowledge of Amanda's late-night work schedule, agents on stakeout are none too surprised when their mark, Demetrius Taft, is spotted leaving the apartment the couple share. Taft enters his car and is followed to a shopping center parking lot. He remains inactive for less than 10 minutes before an unknown vehicle arrives. An unknown female disembarks from the driver's seat and greets the suspect with a warm hug hello. The duo follow one another in their cars across the parking lot to a popular bookseller's. They peruse the periodicals for a little while before continuing their flirtation back at their cars. Taft and his companion, in time, agree to part ways, stealing one more kiss before the suspect returns home and awaits Amanda's looming arrival. Investigation Day 7. With Amanda working another late night shift, Taft takes the opportunity to escape the confines of the apartment they share. Mobile units tail him to a lively drinking establishment. He lopes across the parking lot and into the arms of his companion from previous surveillance. Taft and his date, whose identity remains withheld, enter and settle themselves at the bar. Ground units venture onto the patio and take advantage of an unhindered view while the couple unabashedly display their craving for each other. Perimeter units keep an eye on the clock, knowing that Amanda's shift ends at midnight. At 11 o'clock, they apparently have not had enough of each other. So they spend another 15 minutes in each other's arms, savoring every moment before the suspect must return home ahead of his girlfriend. Investigation Day 10. As with previous days, the suspect waits for Amanda to work the night shift before continuing his secret serenade. Taft exits the apartment, carrying with him a portable piano, cruising to a well-known Mexican cantina. Upon his arrival, the suspect's muse enthusiastically greets him with a hug and a kiss. As the lovebirds enter, it's Amanda who's played like a fiddle in this recorded phone call with Demetrius. Hello? Hey, babe, how are you? Hey, I'm glad you called. Uh, once I get off of here, I'm going to go home, you know, grab the gear and see if I can go ahead and get some more gigs. So I'm just letting you know. Oh, okay, babe, that's not a problem. Um, go out there and try to make that money. You know, electricity is due. We definitely need that. I'll uh, make sure I call you before I leave and everything, so, you know, keep your heads up. Hey, right, babe. I love you. Love you, too. Bye. Bye. Once the twosome return to their cars, Taft pulls out his organ and begins to tickle the ivories for his love-struck groupie. Having seen enough, agents close the case and compile the facts for Amanda's assessment. Coming up, the confrontation.
Now that all indications point to infidelity, Cheaters gathers their evidence for Amanda's review. Setting aside her reservations, Amanda comes in with her intention to safeguard her valued self-respect. Amanda, we contacted you this evening because our detectives do have information that they thought might clear up some of the questions that you have regarding Demetrius and your relationship. Are you prepared? to see that now. Yes. Amanda, we began our investigation outside of your home. On this evening, Demetrius exits, gets into his car, and he parks in a random parking lot. A short time later, another car pulls in, he gets out, it's a young lady, they greet each other, and then follow one another to a local bookseller. They enter the building quite closely. Later, as they exit, they spend some time in conversation. There's an embrace, and they both go their separate ways. On this evening, we again were outside of your home. Demetrius travels to a popular Mexican cantina. Again, he is met by this young lady in the parking lot with a hug and a kiss before going inside. And after dining and exiting, they spend a few intimate moments in the parking lot. Before she leaves, he stops her, goes back to the driver's side window for some more, and then gets back inside his car and returns. Amanda, let me check with the detective and see if he can give me an update on what is actually taking place tonight. Yeah, Gomez, what do you have? You met the same girl? Say what now? She entered a bikini contest. It looks like she entered a bikini contest. Okay. All right, they're still inside. We're pulling up right now. Everybody out, everybody out, everybody out. Right now, everybody out. Hey. Coming up next, the conclusion.
met the same girl. After the confrontation, Amanda must choose to forgive or reject her wayward boyfriend. At the end of the show, we'll reveal her final solution. But next, Cheater's visits with Corin Matthews, the former complacent party from the Rita Stout case. Miss Matthews comes forward to express her thoughts 
on being caught with Rita's boyfriend while remaining afloat on Cheaters. We had been dating about two or three months. It was, I thought it was starting to get serious or whatever. He was telling me he wanted to see me more, maybe possibly get our own place or get an apartment because we weren't staying together at the time. Well, we saw Marguerite coming up and we was kind of confused because she was nine months pregnant. And they came out to the boat and asked us a bunch of questions and she wanted to know what was going on with us and how long we had been talking and why we was out there and stuff like that. Nah, what you doing out here? You out here rolling the damn boat? This what y'all got going? No, yeah, a friend of mine. How she become a friend of yours too? Oh, we just, you know, I called the phone and he answered the phone. You been acting all crazy lately. What you mean crazy? Ever since she got pregnant, baby. That's just what I do. That's what I do. Is this crazy, George? Yeah, it's very. So we imagine this. What? I had to let him go. The same day we was going out on our dates when he was telling me we was going to move in together, um, the producer showed me the tape of him in the store. When I was actually outside in the car, he was talking to some females in the store. So, no, thank you. I don't want him anymore. I ain't wearing the bed. Now I know you are. Y'all belong you together. Y'all belong okay. together. Okay, well, I promise bye. you. I okay, promise well, you y'all belong together. Okay. I promise bye. you y'all belong together. Bye. 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 Get her. Bye. Get her. Bye. This girl don't know me. Don't she do her. Get her. Both of y'all must. No, it don't matter. It don't matter. George, why'd you say to walking up on me? You don't want me. Why'd you touch me? Why'd you touch me? You see her? You see her, George? Go on. I want to be single for a long time. No more drama. No more cameras watching me. Never know who's out looking. So. so I would like to apologize to her, and I would like her to understand that everybody makes mistakes and. Maybe we can patch things up one day and I can show her how a true friendship was supposed to be since we were friends for all that time anyway. One incident shouldn't break it up. Following the disturbing revelation of her boyfriend's betrayal, Amanda Henry has concluded it's better to cut all ties with her former lover than to try to recover from the damage he's done. She's currently living with family while she recuperates. Demetrius Taft is confident that he'll be forgiven for his indiscretion. He believes that once Amanda calms down, he'll be able to explain his actions and that their bond will be stronger than ever. Taft's companion. Hey, please. Faster! Yeah, baby. I'm gonna handcuff you. Get out of my face! Oh my God! You are a cheater. Now you're a comedian. That's what you deserve. That's what you deserve. Real reality television is brought to you by Cheaters Detective Agency's Private Eyes on Cheaters. Alarmed by his live-in boyfriend's lack of affection, Sebastian Asner is starting to believe there's something sinister behind his cold demeanor. Needing answers instead of deception, Sebastian wants to bring the truth to light. I'm Joey Greco, and this is Cheers. When I met Brian, I was visiting from Louisville, Kentucky, during summer break with some friends. We were out of the club, and I saw him, he saw me, and we started talking. He begged me for like a year and a half to move down here, and I finally decided I wanted to change the scenery, so I came down here, and about a year ago, when we actually finally did move in together, I started noticing that he just started acting real distant and shady. He put a different lock code on his phone, and I don't know, he's just real secretive and acting kind of funny. When he came home from work one night, he was like getting ready to take a shower or whatever, and he took his shirt off. And it's a polo shirt, so it has a collar on it, so it's kind of hiding it. But when he took his shirt off, I noticed that he had all these marks on his neck. So I asked him, what is that? And he was like, those are hickeys. And I was like, how'd they get there? And he told me that I put him there. And I was like, really? Like, that's, that's impossible. There's no way I could have done that. Because for one, I don't leave hickeys. And for two, like, we haven't been intimate. And, you know, I don't even know how long. 
if I was to catch Brian cheating on me, I guess I, I honestly don't know what I'd do, but I'd probably, <laughs> probably go crazy. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters Detective Agency may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Investigative charges may apply. Brian, age 24. A clerk suspected of giving out his sweet treats to another man. Investigation Day 2. After assembling all necessary intel on the suspect, Cheater's agents surround his place of employment and begin surveillance. Around lunchtime, perimeter units spot the suspect, identified only as Brian, exiting the shopping mall and waiting by the curb. A few minutes later, an approaching automobile draws detectives' attention. The car pulls up to a stop in front of Brian. He enters the passenger seat and gives the mysterious driver a brief kiss. Mobile units initiate pursuit and follow the pair to a nearby fast food restaurant. Brian and his unknown male companion exit the vehicle and walk across the lot. They enter and order. Brian laughs with his host as they sit across from one another, gorging themselves on a couple of supersized combo meals. The energetic lunch comes to an end and the couple leave. Mobile units follow the couple back to the shopping mall and spy the two engaging in a long goodbye kiss. Brian eventually steps out of the car and goes back to work. Investigation Day 3. Ground agents take advantage of the crowds and venture into the mall. Nearing the end of his shift, Brian is visited by his companion from earlier surveillance, whose identity remains withheld. Detectives keep eyes on the duo as they walk through the mall and into an elevator. The detective secretly scopes out the suspect and his clandestine companion on the ride up and out of the mall. Once in the parking lot, Brian is escorted to his partner's car. Mobile units pull behind the dark sedan as it enters a nearby parking garage. The car climbs to the third floor before finding a parking space. Once the engine is cut off, the activity inside the cab revs up. Once the couple's passion subsides, they emerge from the car and share another fervent moment saying goodbye. The companion watches longingly as Brian returns to his car and departs. Investigation Day 6. Brian appears to be in the middle of an important phone call while he makes his way across the parking lot and into his vehicle. Brian finds his way to a desolate and darkly lit parking lot. He backs his vehicle into a space, seemingly signaling his companion already waiting to get in. As Brian enjoys his surreptitious affections, it's Sebastian who's affected in this recorded phone call. With all the evidence pointing to an affair, agents pull up stakes and return to headquarters to begin analyzing the data for Sebastian's review. Coming up, the confrontation. With evidence of his boyfriend's patent dishonesty, Cheaters brings Sebastian the proof. Ready for his agony to end, he sets his sights on forgiveness until he sees the truth. Well, Sebastian, I know that you've been concerned for quite a while. I know you've had some questions and some difficulty understanding what's actually going on in your relationship with Brian. All right. Our detectives have information that they thought it was very important that you see. I know you're apprehensive 
But are you ready to view that now? Hell yeah. On this afternoon, we had a detective outside of the shopping mall where Brian works. Brian exits the building and was observed having a phone conversation. Not too many more minutes after that, and a car pulls up. As he gets in, he leans in and appears to give this individual a kiss. They're followed to a fast food restaurant, and now that we see as they enter that this is another gentleman. They have a meal, return back to Brian's place of employment. There is another prolonged exchange, and then Brian goes inside and goes back to work. On this afternoon, our detective, from a higher vantage point, observed Brian at work. The same gentleman that we've seen him with previously approaches the counter. They have a conversation. Not long after that, they leave. Our detective was able to get inside the elevator and catch them in a casual exchange. But they were followed out until they get to the vehicle of this other gentleman. It looks like they're beginning to leave the parking area, but they veer off and actually go into a covered area of the parking structure. They spend some time there, Sebastian, of a more intimate nature at that location. Before they get out, we see another romantic exchange. He gets into your car, and Brian returns home for the evening. On this day, we again observe Brian as he leaves work. Our detectives follow until he arrives at a park that's not too far away. Now Brian backs in, is joined by his gentleman friend. They leave, go to a nearby convenience store, go inside, make some purchases. They go back to the park. They steal a few more intimate moments at the park. They start to leave but this gentleman hasn't had quite enough, goes back in to double dip, and then when they're each satisfied, they each go their separate ways. Thank you. I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can reach our detective for an update on what's taking place right now. Hey, uh, we just finished up with a briefing. We're, we're in the vans and we're rolling in your direction. Okay. He just left them all. His friend was there waiting for each other. They're both driving, detectives behind them. Okay. Just thinking about the fact that he's in my car right now is just. Ugh. Arkansas dead ends into a lake, and that's where they are. Okay, we're underway right now. That's a rush. Gomez over here. Come on with me. Ready? Let's do it. Let's go. What the f is y'all? Move. What the hell is this? Uh, my nephew. Bro, what is that? What is this? Who the f is that? Who, who the f is that, no. actually? What are you doing here? What the f are you doing here, actually? Chilling. Why are you here? Why else would I be here? What the f do you think? I'm not this. Bitch! Move. No, I'm not going to talk to you. <laughs> Bitch, this. Move. Watch out. Can you get the camera out of my face, dude? Why are you here? This is, this is unnecessary. What the f is all this bullshit? <laughs> oh my god. Coming up next, the conclusion. Arkansas dead ends into a lake, and that's where they are. What the hell is this? Who the f is that? Who the f is that? Why are you here? Oh my god. Watch out. This is his boyfriend. Okay, what they the live together. Live together. They live together. Okay. The truck that Brian Don't drives around in. Don't need to know. Bastions. You a lying ass mother. So? Nothing ass mother. Bitch, get your hands up. Bitch. What is your problem? You, bitch. Well, you guys. Easy. Break Gentlemen. Up, Gentlemen, calm down. Break it up. Oh. 
bitch. So he's been lying as much as he's been lying to his boyfriend. I don't know nothing about this bitch right here. No, well, so. you would because he's been lying. And that's my point. Man, I don't got nothing to say to y'all right now. You ready? Let's go. Mm -hmm. Um, why are you trying to leave, bitch? I need my keys. I'll give them to you later. No, no. give me my keys right the now. Why is he gonna get in this little raggedy ass car with you, bitch? Okay. Give me my keys. See, I, I see. Go the house. You. Get the out the damn way. Come on. You are so. Who, bitch? Why you. Why you open my face, bitch? Oh. Hey. Hey. Here you be, sir. Careful, careful, careful. Back up. Go home. You. I gave you bitch. your keys. Take your ass. Where the are they? Bitch, Over there. don't tell me to go home. You don't go know home. me, bitch. Come on. Get the out of my way, bitch. Hey, no, that's not necessary. Let's calm this down. Right, come on, man. Get them apart. Yo, Got your glasses, bitch! We'll get some new ones, ho! Get the f out the way! Punk ass bitch! Got some? You're a punk. I told you to go away. Bitch, we throw. Gone. We throw. Duh, obviously. <laughs> Take you know, to find out. Be up here, man. Let's go. So that's the motherfucker with them hickeys on your neck? Obviously. They didn't come from you. Come on, Brian. Why are you talking to him? Why are you talking to him? Do you see what you're walking away with? Yeah. yeah not you. you. Right. Bitch. No! Oh! When you cheat, bitch, cheat up. Cheat up. Not down. You downgraded. You didn't, Brian. You think that. Don't come to my house, bitch. Okay. Watch out. Wouldn't advise that. I'm so done with this. I'm broke my seat. Imagine that. You all right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Just we're just relaxing a little bit. <laughs> I'm cool. Okay. All right. Just talk to Spash a little bit. Spash, I'm gonna follow you home. Make sure everything's okay. okay. Right, so just drive slow, check your time. I know right now you've kind of gone through a whole lot real fast. I'm going to follow you home and you're home. Okay, all right? So thank you. Following the confrontation, Sebastian succumbs to his depression. Later, we'll update you on his condition. But next, we welcome back Dolly Bailey, a former client hoping to shed some light on her actions when confronting her boyfriend on Cheers. When I walked in that bar, I just completely flipped. I, you know, I have never been so angry in my entire life. I cannot believe that he was actually there. He was singing that song to her. I remember when he was writing that song and I, or he just kept telling me it was about a fictitious woman. It was didn't mean anything. and. You know, and then to walk in there and to see her and realize that it was, you hear him singing that song to her. I just, I, I cannot believe that he did that. What are you doing, mother? You. Huh? What the f are you doing, huh? What the f are you doing? You better stop it. Come here. 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 Get in there, get in there, get in there, get in there. 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 
I mean, this was a long-term 10-year relationship, you know, for him to, to do something like this. I mean, if he was so unhappy, why did he just not end it before then? Why did he have to do this? Why did he have to go there? Ladies and gentlemen, Dolly, everybody. How long have you been seeing him? Probably about five months now. Do you know that they've been together for 10 years? Has he told you that? Nobody told me they were done. Why don't you tell him everything you've been doing? And my house, man, that I pay for. I haven't been doing anything. My car, they make payments on you, face. He did try contacting me several times, trying to work it out after all this happened, but it, there was just absolutely no way. There's, there's no way that, that I could even consider ever you know, I have more respect for myself than that. In the aftermath of the confrontation, Sebastian Asner is heartbroken that the man he gave his love to would do this to him. He claims that he has no one to turn to in his time of need and has become despondent over the past few weeks. With the help of Cheater's producers, Sebastian has finally agreed to counseling, but fears the hole in his heart will never heal. When finally reached by Cheater's producers, Brian was less than open. He would only say that Sebastian has a selective memory and wants nothing more to do with him. As for Brian's companion, he wants Sebastian to know that Brian is happy. Well, we've been married for five years. And uh, we have a son named Nacho, who's two. Um, it's actually been great. The marriage has been awesome until, until just a little bit ago that uh, his actions have been totally different. So lately he's been very distant with me. He has been, we usually talk about our day and if we have any plans for the weekends and he just, he just hasn't been very talkative like he usually is. Adam Adams, age 26, a business consultant accused of backroom meetings with another woman. Receiving the suspect's itinerary from an anxious Claudia, Cheater's operatives wait outside their Mark's workplace. At the end of the day, Adams leaves and drives to an unknown apartment building. He pulls up next to the building. A young woman waiting by the building runs to his car and gets in. Unknowingly tailed by Cheater's investigators, Adams and his passenger drive across town. They stop at an unknown office building and go inside. Sometime later, Adams escorts the young lady back to her car. They drive off, again followed by a Cheater's mobile unit. Adams and his friend arrive at a shopping district this time. Like the other day, I was going to email my friend and I accidentally um, saw his browsing history on the internet and saw that he's been checking out Russian prostitute sites. And I mean, I thought we had a really healthy sexual relationship. And now it's just, it kind of got me wondering why would he be looking at that? Why is he even looking? somewhere else if he's getting what he wants at home. He's also saying that he's putting in extra hours at work and he's been staying later, but the money isn't adding up. I mean, we're actually behind on bills and I mean, I'm the one in charge of the bookkeeping at the house, so I know what's coming in and what's going out and it's just not adding up. The suspect and his paramour go into a pastry shop to indulge their desire for sweets. Sometime later, Adams escorts his woman back to his ride. Their destination this time happens to be yet another shopping strip. The suspect drops his friend off and drives home to his lonely wife. Adam said he would always be faithful to me and be honest and straight up and just always be there for me. And right now he's not. He's, he's being very selfish, not thinking about his family his son, our future, and if he's cheating, I don't know if I could be with him. I don't think I'm emotionally, mentally strong for that.
Cheaters' operatives once again set up watch around the suspect's workplace. Late in the day, Adams leaves work. Cheaters' detectives follow the suspect to a nearby store. Shortly, he returns with a woman from previous surveillance, now identified only as Amelia. Cheaters' field agents tail the pair to the office building they previously visited. After some time, Adams and Amelia exit the building. The pair appear to have received good news, as indicated by the kick in Adam's step. The suspect arrives at his other woman's home, and after dropping Amelia off, drives himself home to Claudia. Staking out the Adam's home, the cheater's surveillance team spots the suspect leaving. Cheater's agents dutifully follow Adams as he travels across town to arrive at a darkened park. The suspect meets with his companion at the swing set. Adams and Amelia have an animated conversation. At some point, Adams drops down on one knee as though proposing. A few minutes later, Adams and his cozy companion walk the short distance to the suspect's vehicle. Adams drives his friend back to her apartment complex. This time, the suspect walks Amelia to her door and then enters and stays a while. A little later, the suspect leaves his companion's apartment, and as Adams heads home to his worried wife, Cheater's agents close the case and begin compiling the report for Claudia's evaluation. Coming up, the confrontation. With her husband's secret meetings now discovered, Cheaters calls on Claudia to provide the information. Her greatest fears at hand, Claudia remains strong in her pursuit of the truth. Claudia, I want to say thank you for coming out. I understand you're going through a lot right now. So understanding that you guys have been together for five years, you have a son that is two years old. Yes. And what's your son's name? Nacho. Nacho. And had you guys have any other further plans? Of Our plan was to get pregnant again, and I'm actually nine weeks right now. You're nine weeks pregnant? Yes. Really? Yes. And is he aware of this? Okay. With that being said, Claudia, as you know, we have conducted our investigation. My question for you is, are you prepared to see what we have come up with? Okay. okay. We begin our investigation outside of Adam's workplace. So when we see Adam emerge, he gets into his vehicle and he drives away. Our detectives follow. A short time later, he arrives at this apartment complex. That's when we see this unknown female in a white dress approach Adam's car. She gets in and they leave together. They then arrive at this unknown building. Do you recognize her at all, Claudia? I don't. They go inside the building for a few moments and sometime later they emerge, get back into Adam's vehicle and they drive away. Our detectives follow them as they arrive at a shopping district. They get out of the vehicle and walk into a cupcake eatery. That's when we see them sit down together, enjoying some ice cream, conversing back and forth. We see Adam explaining a few things. A few moments later, they exit the cupcake diner, get back into Adam's vehicle together. A few moments later, he drops her off at another strip mall, and then Adam proceeds to return home for the evening. On this day of our investigation, we are outside of your residence. Short time later, Adam emerges and he gets into his vehicle. That's when our detectives follow him as he arrives at a park. He walks over to the swings and sits down next to that unknown female. After playfully talking on the swing set, things get a little bit more heated and he gets on his knees trying to explain a certain point. We're not really sure of what that is at this time, but then he walks away and receives a phone call. What you're about to hear is the audio from that phone call, Claudia. Tell me if you remember this. Hey, babe, what's up? Hey, what are you doing? Oh, just running around, you know, fiddling around, trying to get some errands. Okay, um, do you mind uh, running some errands for me? I'm busy right now. We're so busy. Babe, I just told you I'm out. I mean, what could be more important than our family? You can't just be there. Babe, I'm there all the time. Fine. No, I'm sorry. I'll let me see if I can do this. I'll try to get the dog food, and I'll, I'll get it done. Have dinner ready for me when I get home. Okay. Bye. Bye. Do you recall that conversation? Yeah, I guess that's why he was so busy. After finishing up the conversation with you, he goes over the swing set, grabs this unknown female, and they walk out of the park. 
He then escorts her to his vehicle, opening up the door for this complete stranger once again, and they drive away from the park. As our detectives follow, they arrive at her apartment complex. He then escorts this unknown female to her apartment building, where he stays for a few hours, and a while later, we see him emerge, get back into his vehicle, and he returns home to you for the evening. Claudia, at this point in time, we know where they're at. Why don't we get in the vans and get to their location, and then we'll wait for our lead detective from there. Yeah. All right? Right this way, please. Right this way. They're right there. What the is this? What are you doing? Nothing. What are you doing? Nothing. We're talking. Are you kidding me? No. We're Our son talking. is sick. What? And you're here with her? We're Who is talking. she? Who is she? She's Kelsey's friend. Adam, do you have anything to say about what's going on right now? I don't I don't know what, what's going on. Um, do you recall the night where you picked this lady up right here and took her to a building, got a piece of paperwork? You kind of did a little horse jump when you went over to your car after opening up the door for her? Yeah, I remember that. Like, what about it? She's nine really? weeks pregnant with your second child. And then you're sitting here with this woman crying about something? You're, you're pregnant? Yes, I'm pregnant. Wow. I've been trying to find an egg donor because we've been having so much problem and that now you're telling me you're pregnant? Yes, I'm pregnant. Why couldn't you just tell me this? Because I didn't want to Why put did this you have to lie to me? I've been working my butt off. I didn't want to put the stress on you. Like, get these guys out of here. So who are you going to put the stress on then, Adam? Her? I've been trying to hold this in. How did you even meet We her? just met. We met How? through Kelsey. Kelsey How? set us up and she told us that. She told me that I told her my problems Sorry. about you wanting to have. We couldn't have a baby. We were, we were trying to have a baby. I've been married to you for five years and you don't trust you, me? You couldn't are tell you me? kidding me? Coming up next, the conclusion. They are at this park sitting together. What are you doing? We're Our son talking. is sick. She's not really? weeks pregnant. And then you're sitting here with this woman crying about something? I've been trying to find an egg donor. Why can't you just tell me this? How are you doing today? I'm I apologize good. about all the cameras and everything, but can I have your side of the story so we can get a real picture about what's going on here? Um, what did this man tell you? He got a hold of me through a friend, a mutual friend. She can't get pregnant. He would be paying me to be the egg donor. This is something serious. This is something I've been serious. For five years. You could you could tell me. You could talk to me. I know. We've been just five years. I understand we've been together for five years, but are you kidding me? You like, couldn't you, just you, tell me. You, you went to these you guys instead just... of coming to talk to me. You couldn't talk to me. How could you think I was cheating on how you? Can, how we can just I not had think sex that? this morning, and you telling how me you can think I I'm not cheating think on you? That? When you're missing, you're supposedly at work, you're doing all this and that, how am I not supposed to think that? You can't even tell me, you can't even talk to me, like a husband and a wife? Tell me. I don't know, I don't know what you want to hear right now, like. This like wasn't, it not like a romantic thing. Like, I just was hoping No, you. but he's taking you out to cupcakes? Really? You opening the door, you going into her house, getting out late. Do I How open is the that? door for you? No, you haven't. Are you kidding me? You know when was the last time you opened the door for me? When? When we we're actually dating. Do you do you care about Nacho right now? Did you, you know care? What? No, no, don't even worry about it. I'll let me prove it to you. Let me do call you Kelsey. care? Yes, I care. You don't need to call anyone. I can show you how much you care about Nacho right here. Here's the phone conversation of you saying that you wanted her. You hear that? When I asked you about doing me a favor because Nacho was sick, so Nacho and you was were sick, with her. You're with her on the swings. Yes, I'm trying to console her. She wanted to back out, and I wanted to make sure this this, this would go through. But you I didn't lied. put all this hard time in it for nothing to come to get come out empty-handed. Sorry. Claudia, why don't we do this? You guys seem like you have a little bit more to talk about. Why don't we get out of here, get to a little bit more of a secluded location where it's quiet, and you guys can talk this out. Does that sound okay? Is that okay with you? All right, right this way. Come on. I apologize for this. What was your name? Amelia. Amelia, we're going to have a detective take you to your home, and um, I just want to say it's very generous of you to donate something for someone, but they had a lot more going on than what met your clearly. eyes. Clearly. Yeah, clearly. Well, I do apologize for this, and um, we'll make sure that you get home safely. Why did we need her? 
you were you, you weren't able to do it. You couldn't, I thought, you couldn't just think that I was just stressed out at work, stressed out with you being gone, stressed out with Nacho being sick. You couldn't just think that. I'm nine weeks. So why didn't you tell me? Because I didn't. Like, what, what, was, How, what was the big deal? Why? Your actions. I wanted to know what what were you doing? If you couldn't even take care of yourself when he's sick, what makes me think? In layman's terms, that she's just worried to tell kid. you about her being nine weeks pregnant because she doesn't know what you're doing because you didn't communicate that to her. You know, nothing I can say is going to prove it right now. No, it? it's if not. If nothing you're going to say really. is going to prove it, would you submit to a polygraph? I would. If we could set that up? Yeah. Imagine me standing here in front of national TV with lights shining out and looking like a cheater when I was doing something, you know, doing something good. Well, I'll leave it at this. What I'm offering right now on her behalf is counseling and a polygraph. If you're willing to submit to a polygraph test and he does pass, will you believe him that this was for the right intentions? Yeah, I mean... Why would that... Why, why do we have to go through all that just to prove... You put me through all this. That's just, that's simple right there. If you have nothing that's to hide, asking you have for nothing. nothing. To worry about. Just, if you have I, nothing I just, to hide, then. But we're gonna have we're gonna have trust issues for the rest of our relationship for the rest. You don't of our think marriage. I already have? Okay, at this point in time, I'm gonna take her because she's obviously not in the best mood, and you two will come in for counseling, do the polygraph, and you'll have nothing to worry about if you have nothing to hide, Adam. Right. Are you ready? Hey, will that make you happy? So let's do it. All right, come on, right this way. Let's go. Following the confrontation, Claudia assesses her state of mind. Soon, Cheaters discloses her plans. But first, Morgan Hughes comes forward to deflect blame surrounding the events leading up to being confronted by her husband on Cheaters. Well, when he got there, I was really shocked and I was embarrassed. And it was just like commotion. It was bad. It was just not, it was a scene that I shouldn't, I didn't wanna, I didn't want that to happen. It was just not a good time at all. What the f y'all doing here? What the Morgan, <laughs> get your ass out of here. <laughs> you, get out of my you, oh, shut the hell up. Get out of my, get up, get, get out of my, 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 Get your ass out of here, Morgan! Seth would go out to the bar, and, you know, sometimes he would come back, you know, drunk and smelling like cigarettes, and just, you know, I would get kind of, you know, annoyed at that. So, you know, he, when I met him, he just, we had a connection, and I've never felt that before. We just started, you know, hanging out, and, I mean, I really, you know, even though he did, you know, live in a very, really not good place by a dumpster. But he was just very nice and sweet to me, so I liked that, and we just like really hit it off. You have nothing to say, Morgan, at all? No. For seven years? You think you're big with all your money? Yeah, dude. All your money. I work for my yeah, big with your money, don't you? I work for my yeah. Yeah. money, don't you? I work for my you do? Morgan. No. Morgan. Get in the van, what's wrong with so you? Answers? Why are you, why are you, you come up here? Hey man, can I hear your side of the story? You? Every day at the damn bar? You so this is what you resort to? Seven years? What does this mean to you? I do feel sorry for Seth because, you know, that's, you know, you know, my was my husband. Like, we were together, and I feel bad and that I hurt him and let him down. It is what it is, and in the future, uh, I see us doing really good things and being together. I see us, you know, Working, you know, getting getting educated, you know, going to school, um, and just who knows, even along the road, you know, have a family and kids. So we're just gonna take take it as it is, day by day. Following the confrontation, Claudia Adams decides to give her husband the benefit of the doubt and waits until the results of his lie detector test come in. Claudia admits she's concerned for her future as well as the child on the way. 
She claims, right now, I'm concentrating on keeping my stress levels down for my baby's sake. As for his part, Adam Adams willingly participates in a lie detector test. The results of the lie detector test were delivered in time for airing of this episode. Adams, as it turned out, is truthful and enjoys exculpation for any and all wrongdoing. When contacted by Cheater's producers, the companion, Amelia, immediately gushes forth about being sorry she was caught up in the misunderstanding. Amelia claims, like I said, I'm an egg donor, that's all. There wasn't any fishy hanky-panky going on. I'm legit. Hey, please. Get out of my face! Oh my gosh! You are a cheater! Uh, now you're a comedian! That's what you deserve. That's what you deserve. Real Reality Television has brought to you by Cheaters Detective Agency's Private Eyes on Cheaters. The pain of divorce is never felt more deeply than by a child. Angelina Osterman has carried that hurt with her into adulthood. But now, she's prepared to put her fears aside and take a leap into marriage. Disconcerting conduct from her longtime boyfriend, however, is causing her to question his devotion. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. Well, my whole life, I, my whole adult life, I should say, I've, I've never, I've been terrified of marriage um, because my parents divorced when I was two, and... Um, there was a 16-year custody battle after that. It was very traumatic, and you know, so marriage, I take it very seriously, and I just wanted to wait until, you know, I was really, really ready. And we've been together for 10 years now, and I just feel like I'm mature and ready for the commitment. Um, but I just wanna make sure that I'm making the right decision. One thing, and it could be just a figment of my imagination, but I was doing laundry and I picked up a shirt and I, I swore I smelled a woman's perfume. I went to just borrow his computer because it was open and you know I needed to look up something just really quick. And all these porn sites come up. But these were sites where you can like actually meet people. <sighs> if he is cheating on me, I mean, I don't even think I can uh, comprehend how it's gonna make me feel because we have such a history our families are so intertwined I mean it's gonna hurt not only us but like our whole family you know I feel like I deserve to be with somebody that wants to be with me and moving on is gonna be just incredibly difficult <laughs> If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters Detective Agency may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Investigative charges may apply. Jonathan Chen, age 37. An analyst suspected of adding a systematic layer of lies onto his relationship. Investigation Day 4. Having completed a preliminary inquiry on Angelina's boyfriend, Cheater's border units surround the suspect's place of employment. Agents identify Jonathan Chan exiting the building. He enters his truck and departs the premises. Chan eventually arrives at an unknown apartment complex. He parks and vanishes between two buildings. About 20 minutes later, investigators reclaim sight of the suspect as he carefully accompanies an unknown female to his truck. The two make tracks to a nearby watering hole. They appear extremely comfortable with one another, sharing their body heat to fight the frigid night air. After the last call for alcohol, Chan and his date depart the tavern and return to the apartment complex. The tanked twosome cling to each other as they enter the unit, receding from sight of investigators' attentive eyes. Investigation Day 6. Detectives on duty keep vigil over Chan's place of employment until he leaves for the evening. Mobile units track him to a grocery store. Chan enters empty-handed, but emerges with a bouquet of flowers. 
Agents are hopeful that the arrangement is for Angelina. But once the suspect makes his turn, it's apparent that he's headed to another familiar location. A background check on the apartment unit frequented by Chan and his friend reveal it to be a corporate apartment paid for by his company. His companion, now identified only as Kara, is the resource manager in charge of the keys. The corporate couple resign themselves to a low-key drinkery, kissing by the glow of a fireplace. After dining on the company's dime, the duo return to the clandestine cottage and disappear inside for the rest of the night. Investigation Day 10. With intel from Angelina that the suspect is heading out of town on business, perimeter agents catch Chan loading his suitcase onto the bed of his truck. He returns to the company apartment occupied by Kara. Delving deeper into Kara's background, detectives uncover that she has been married for seven years, with an anniversary just around the corner. While Chan and Kara enjoy their counterfeit couple's retreat, it's Angelina who's genuinely deceived, demonstrated by this recorded phone call. Hello? Hi. Hi, how are you? I just landed. It was pretty long flight. Naturally delayed to begin with. But um, I'm here. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I miss you. Yeah, I miss you too. I got a, I got a, big, day, a big day tomorrow. I've uh, got an early meeting. Okay. And uh, I, I got to get to I get to sleep before tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, have a good night's rest. And I guess give me a call tomorrow. Yeah, I'll give you a ride. Okay. I love you. With little time to waste, agents finalize their findings and call on Angelina to witness the truth. Coming up, the confrontation. With solid evidence confirming the suspect's deceit, Angelina is called upon to examine the proof. With a mixture of fear and determination, she absorbs the footage and discovers the truth. As our investigation began, we had a detective outside of John's place of business. He leaves his office, goes to an apartment complex. He goes into one of the units and comes out a short time later with a young lady. They go to a bar. We see them out on the patio. It's a co-worker. Her name's Kara. That pretty much is all that we were able to identify until he drove her back to the apartment, and then he went home for the evening. Our detectives researched that unit. The owner is the company that John works for. On this day, we again picked up John outside of his place of business. He was followed until he arrived at a grocery store. He runs inside, and when he exits, it appears that, that he's flowers? purchased some flowers. From there, he picks up the same woman. They go to a bar. In the bar, there seem to be some playfulness going on between the two of them as he noms her on the cheek they go back to the apartment and that's where John stays mm -hmm. let me contact our detective and I'll see if he can give me a specific location of where John is can we just go like I really just yeah. want to go I know but we have to we just want to make sure everything's in place I I just I want to see him and okay. her we'll make sure that that happens Gaston and Garland okay We'll head there now. We'll look for you. Interesting. All right, where are we at? Straight through this alley. Please stand through the door. I'm open for that, but uh, we'll make sure it's nice. Straight back, that's why.
Angelina. Stop it. Look, look, ladies. No. Angelina, it's not what you hey, think. This, not you whore. You want to call me a whore? Get away from me, okay? Get away. No. You, Angelina, I'm not waiting. Yeah. Get away. Calm down, calm down. Angelina, come on. Come here, come here. Come here. Come here. Coming up, the conclusion. They went to a bar. We'll head there now. It's not what you hey, think. Not you whore! <laughs> Go! Get away! Guilty of what? Are you serious? Hey! Next question! Kara, how, how did this get started? I'm sorry, what? How did this get started? You know who I am. All I'm in there is just a good time. I've been asking you to marry me for freaking like how many? Three years now? Angelina, I'm tired of being the collateral damage well, from your that, parents' see that girl relationship. She's for I you. know what you went through. We've talked about this, and I know that's what's, you know, been. One of the biggest. You did. You. But I've been what there for you. Did. Do you know how you. long I've been there for I you? I suffered for that, like, and you did exactly what they did. Jonathan, let's John. go. We've been Forget through it. this before. I've been through let's this go. already with your friend Kara. Kara We've had detectives Kara, Kara, Kara. following you. No, let's just go. <laughs> you don't give. No, no, no. Angelina, get off of me. <laughs> Kara. What? Leave her alone. What does she have to do to take care of herself? She didn't have you. <laughs> Jonathan, go now. Will you? Please. Please what? Gonna hurt somebody. Give me a minute. Come with me please. now. No, come with no. me now. Hey, no, John, John. Kara, don't hit me. Kara. It's nothing. I don't. I don't care about you. I don't love you. Fine. I don't give a I'm just being a ride home. Give me the... Have a second, John. Can I have a second. What? Can I have a second with Angelina? Are you okay? She's fine. You know, Excuse me. Just we'll, one second. We're, we're gonna work it out. Okay. Will you be honest? <laughs> yeah, I've been honest. John. Joey. You've been don't honest. Don't look at me. You've been honest. Yeah, I'm gonna look at you because you're still lying. If she wants to go and she wants to go with you, that's up to her. Uh huh. But don't manipulate her. Be more of a man than that. You, Joey. Yeah. What are you gonna do? Get up nose to nose to me? You don't want none of this. What are you gonna do? See, and now, now you're, you're turning yeah. me into you, John. <laughs> if you wish. No, I don't. Please yeah, you go do. home. Just, just okay, well, hey, do you want to go? Hey, you don't want to just whoa, whoa, whoa. leave her alone. Get out of here. Hey. <laughs> let, let go. Let go. Let go of her. Thanks for your help. I appreciate no. it. Are you sure nice you want to go? You sure you're safe? All right. You know what? Can you just please just let me go home alone and let me just. It's the best. Let a work their own things out. Do you want to go? I appreciate you guys helping us out. I want to go. Well, we're good. Do you want to go with us? Yeah, I want to go home. Take me home, please. Okay. I will talk Angelina. to you after I get some rest and think about all this. Sweetie, sweetie, sweetie. Let go. John, John, Sweetie, John. Let go. Oh, well, yeah, like walk off with Joey. That's like step from behind. Well, there'll be time to talk. If you want to talk, there'll be time to talk. 
but now it's not the format. <laughs> stop. Stop for one. No. Andrew, will you stop for a second? No, let me I go. I put up, I listen to you. You're crying. Then You're let me go. If you hit it so much, listen to me. let me go. I listen to you all the time. footage of. I don't even know what you're showing her. Like what? Me going to work? Okay, you want, you want me, me you want, getting on a plane? You want, Hold on me, you want me to show it to you? You want me to show it to you? John. You can show what? me anything you want. Angelina. Don't let him come in here. Like, why are you still here? No! No, we're not finishing this discussion here tonight. No. no, no. Get out. Okay, all right. You know what? That's enough, guys. Everyone, that's enough. John. Get out! No, it's, you know, it's not the time. All right, guys. Let's wrap it up. Following the confrontation, Angelina is heartbroken by her boyfriend's cold-hearted exploits. At the end of the show, we'll inform you on how she's mending. But first, Eve Cullen returns to expound on her experience when confronting her boyfriend on Cheaters. In a way, I was almost relieved because I hate it when someone tells me I'm crazy and I'm just imagining things and nothing's wrong because there was a proof right there in front of me that, yeah, I was right. Surprise, bitches! You just got busted! You us! Hey, 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 ladies, ladies, ladies. Let's settle down. I don't want to talk to you! What are you doing here? Shut up! Airtime? Shut up! Good job. Well, you know, miss, I don't, did you, did you know he lives with someone? You're out of, yeah, you got your camera crew and your Jerry Springer sideshow bull. Oh, whoa, whoa. What the hell are you doing? What do you think? What do you care? What do you... Care. You haven't cared for three yeah, years. Well, you wouldn't need to be here. I don't even remember your business. What do? Stop. Well, when he showed up finally to get his things, he was just giving me this attitude like everything that he had done, everything that had happened, was on me. It was my fault. I caused it. I was just so ready for him to get his things and get out, get those damn dogs away from me. You know, I can't believe he was like hiding behind the dogs instead of talking to me and giving me answers face to face. That really ticked me off. Oh my God, Get now, your damn hands off of him! Now, you don't have any say so anymore. Just go, go play, you know, go play. I got closet. plenty to say! That's not, nah, that's, that's really funny coming from you. Yeah, well all you care about is those wolves. I told you ask to stay back. You just want to get out of here. You guys are idiots. How long have you been him in my bed? You don't, you don't, you don't even care. You nasty you ass. I bet you didn't even change the damn sheets. Now that I'm not with Brian, I've gone back to school. I've got a new job. I'm seeing people as friends. I'm going to take the next relationship really slow and try to get to know the person, all of the person, and uh, everything before we get to that stage of a relationship again and getting serious because I don't want to make the same mistake twice. Following the confrontation, Angelina Osterman has dedicated herself to battle against her former boyfriend's pattern of manipulation and emotional cruelty. Angelina has started therapy and has begun rebuilding the family relationships lost long ago. According to Jonathan Chan, it was Angelina who wrecked the relationship. He claims that she was never able to put her past behind her and enjoy what she had in front of her. Chan claims that he'll always love her, but is looking forward to beginning his life over again. Kara did not wish to come.